Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I did a short video here on uh, something I recently bought. Um, a flight controller I've never used from a company called Speedy Bay. And there's quite a few of the guys doing unboxings and things on this particular uh, flight controller. So I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, in fact, I've already got the thing mounted here on a board. Um, that's a flight controller there. Comes as three boards, which you need to fit together. A um, little bit of soaring involved. You need to uh, put the pin headers on there for the uh, servo outputs. And also the wiring that uh, you're going to be using, i.e. That's the, that's the one that's off to my ESC, that's the one that's off to the battery. And I put a couple of spares on there just uh, so I can pick up battery voltage if I need them for ancillary stuff on board the plane. The first impression of it was that it's extremely small. <laughs> um, I'm used to using the Maytag F405 wing for my FPV uh, aircraft. Unfortunately Maytech, for whatever reason, decided to um, stop production of them. This company Speedy Bay have stepped in producing this F405 wing flight controller at a very reasonable price. Very reasonable price indeed. And uh, I kind of fancy Maytag have dropped the ball truthfully because these people are selling thousands of these apparently and I'm not surprised. It's, uh, it's a lot of flight controller for the money. A lot of the guys have talked about them. I found it reasonably easy to work on. Um, the one main point with them seems to be that the SD card is mounted in the centre of the board and you can't get access to it. Um, rather than it being on the edge of the board and easily accessible. Not a problem uh, if you're using Arduplan, which is what I tend to use on my uh, flight controllers because you can access them there. Unfortunately, at this moment in time, there's no stable Arduplan version for this uh, wing flight controller. So I'm kind of having to mess around with iNav and that's new ground for me because I've never used iNav before. But um, finding my way around it a little bit, I've got the... Uh, I like to get my flight controller set up on a board as you can see before they go into the uh, airframe. I've got an old GPS uh, receiver and compass unit uh, plugged in just now. There's a new one of the <coughs> excuse me, uh, one of the M10 um, brand GPS units en route. I believe it's the walk snail unit which uh, will go, which will attach to here. At this point I'd just like to say a little bit about um, compasses or magnetometers on fixed wing aircraft. There's an awful lot of people who um, think that compass or magnetometer isn't necessary for fixed wing. Probably correctly in some respects, not in others. Um, I don't buy into that theory actually. To me, the, the compass is there in the GPS. I've got it hooked in to the E squared C port. And it literally took me about two minutes to configure and calibrate. Now, I'm of the opinion that the more positional information that flight controller can get to determine where it is, where it's heading, the better, um, in my view. So to have a compass and disable it, I don't know, I just, it's not in my train of thought. 
There are certain scenarios when GPS could be jammed or you know certain weather conditions that can take out a GPS receiver so that was to happen mid-flight at least with the compass the magnetometer hooked up to the flight controller it's always going to know it's heading home that's my way of thinking not everybody thinks that way it's the way I think um, once again I think the more information you can give this guy here the better but not everybody thinks that way um, I still use my I still like to use uh, 433 megs for my stuff and uh, that's my uh, open LRS NG receiver there which is uh, plugged into that the um, S bus wire is this one here the white one which goes off into the board that's soldered on up there underneath one of the boards which is a bit fiddly but got it in so I dropped some um, glue on there to give it some strengthening uh, the power to the uh, receiver also comes from the uh, flight controller and my RSSI. I prefer to use analog RSSI. So yeah, I've got a little else, um, RC network, low pass filter in line off to the RSSI pin. And that seems to work out pretty good. I did have an issue with the um, S-Bus connection because those three pins here, here and here are the S-Bus input for this particular flight controller my open LRS NJ receiver would not work on those because it has an uninverted SBUS output luckily these people have put a, a, a receiver input for uh, Express LRS which is the one you're seeing right there and uh, that works perfectly well with that working perfectly well with that so I was uh, quite pleased about that I've got the um, external USB-C connector, and uh, which is a good idea. One or two of the guys picked up on the lead for that's a little bit short. I totally agree with that. I'm going to lengthen that one because I, I want to put that in a certain position on the aircraft. And uh, that's where I'm at at the moment. So quite pleased with uh, what I'm saying so far so I've got the thing powered up now here on the board with a uh, homemade uh, 3S3P lithium ion pack that I'm just finished repairing actually I'm using for bench testing here you can see the uh, display on the <laughs> the display of lights on the, the 4 of i wing and uh, on the USB connector there got it hooked up to iNav and uh, just going through a learning curve basically as I said iNav is not my thing normally but uh, we are learning as we go you can see the model moving around there and the display we're messing on this morning a bit with the modes trying to get my head around that once again slightly different to uh, auto plane and currently got the thing in acro mode which I believe is the mode you need to be in when you're uh, running auto tunes etc so at the moment I've got that set up for manual, manual. acro mode, acro horizon mode, and horizon. When I'm testing, running auto tunes, acro mode. Got the return to home set up. Return to home initiated. Turn to home off. 
uh, lighter. lighter and auto tune along with the auto tune I set the auto level Switch off. and I also have the um, adjust trims set until I get this thing flying the way I want it and then we'll um, remove some of the modes that we don't want there's the mixer currently so yeah navigation not safe at the moment because this old GPS receiver on the bench is uh, not seeing enough satellites to allow it to do that that will be obviously resolved A when that goes outside or B when the uh, new uh, GPS receiver arrives so yeah we're, we're learning quite a bit enjoying the learning curve um, finding the iNav interface from a newbie's perspective very good uh, very easy to use quite intuitive some things I'm not sure about, we've had a look on the wiki but uh, yeah we're getting there so it looks like the speed of the F405 wing is working fine up to this point it's going to go into a rebuild airframe um, that I have uh, which is an FPV Raptor, which is a 1600mm um, wingspan airframe which I'll do a video about when I get that uh, rebuilt and get this installed anyway thanks for watching this one look out for the next one um, the rebuild of the FPV Raptor and I'll go over what I've done and uh, show you this thing working in the airframe Thanks for watching. Catch you later.